So let's say you want to integrate with an LLM, so ChatGPT or Claude um, Anthropic, from your .NET web application. The problem with this kind of thing is you can soon get lost in the weeds and it's a complicated picture. You know, you've got Azure, you've got OpenAI itself, um, all the various frameworks and SDKs for interacting with it. It, be it becomes confusing. Semantic kernel, RAG, you're suddenly facing a lot of terminology, frameworks and platforms that you're unfamiliar with. And I had this myself the other day and I thought, well, what's the, you know, by now there must be a fairly straightforward way just to say I want to send a message to chat and get a response. And it turns out there is, and it's using a preview library from Microsoft called Extensions for AI. The idea is that there's a common abstraction, so an interface for a chat client, for example, and that you can use that interface to interact with chat regardless of the under the hood details of how that's working. So first up, how do we actually use extensions for AI? Well the simplest example we can really come up with is something like this. Now this is, we'll need to bring in some uh, namespaces here which are, we'll look at in a minute where these have come from but it's these ones here, Azure and Microsoft extensions.ai. And when we do that, we can set up some credentials. This is pointing to a GitHub token, which we'll look at as well in a second. And it creates this client. You can see here the use of the interface, iChat clients. That's that key abstraction that we can use here. And then we're pointing it at a URL for the LLM itself. And we're able to send a message and get a response. And if I actually run this, what we'll probably get is an error, but let's just give it a go and we'll see what we need to fix. So we get an error and that's because I haven't told it which model to use. But where does that come from? Well, to answer that, we need to understand what we're actually using here, which is something called GitHub models. So here on the GitHub models page in the marketplace, there are all these models that we are able to use basically for development purposes um, from Microsoft, from Cohere, from DeepSeek, Meta. So if we stick with the open AI one for a moment, we could just test it here. So how are you today? Probably not gonna get a particularly useful response to that prompt, but let's just see, there you go. So that's what we're kind of expecting to get from our application when we ask the same question. But the good thing is that we can use all these models for development purposes without having to you know, pay per use and set up accounts at all the various LLM providers. And the way we can do that is by clicking this use this model button here. You'll need to get a key, so this is just to log in with. You can go ahead and do that. I have found that the easiest way is to use is to generate a classic token here, give it a name. You don't need to give it any permissions actually for this to work. Click generate token and you'll see the key that you need. You need to copy that because you won't see that again once you leave that page. And once you have that, you can come along back to your application and plug that in. So I've put that into config via user secrets. The key thing is that you give it this name, GH token. So that's working, but the error we're seeing is about a model ID. So what we haven't done is tell this code which of the models that GitHub models provides we should actually use. So for that, we need to go back to GitHub models. We can click on this use this model button again. And what we're going to see here is some example code of how to set this all up. And if we look carefully in that example code, we can see the model that we actually want to use. So if I copy that, head back to here, and where we call this as chat clients method, we can actually give it the model name. This will rebuild hopefully. And now if I click invoke the chat, what we should do is see some kind of message come through. There you go the slightly attitude-y message from ChatGPT telling us it doesn't have feelings. Fair point. So this is working. And obviously from here, what we might want to do is display this in the UI. So I've got a field here called underscore response. We can just assign that at this point. So we can do response equals. And on the object that we're interacting with here, there's a message property and that has a text property, which could be null. So we can just handle that and say, no message received. Because this is a Blazor server app, we're then able to show that response in the UI. So if I click the button now, we should see something in the UI. I've also set the disabled property on the button to an in-progress flag. Now, we're not using that yet, but we can just very easily 
for demo purposes set that flag to true at the beginning of this process and then set it to false at the end. Obviously this isn't really production ready because it doesn't handle things like errors in the middle of that process but with that in place we now get our disabled button so that's better UI we can see that something's happening and I've also just bound to that field in progress to show some kind of loading indicator this could be an SVG or whatever it might be but for this example it's just a loading the word loading which is why we now see that when we click the button now just before we go where do you get hold of this package well we in this case have been using something called uh, Azure AI inference it's a little bit confusing because we're using github models but we're seeing the word Azure everywhere here that's just because the kind of Microsoft architecture behind this is essentially built out of Azure but for our purposes using github models this is the package that we need to use. So there you have it. That's the simplest way I can think of to integrate an LLM with your .NET Blazor web application.